Guzman, and this is Conversations with the Goodman School of Business. I have two guests today with me. Uh, we have Professor Maxim Voronov and Professor Wesley Helms, strategy professors here at the Goodman School of Business, and we're here to talk about evangelists, which is kind of an interesting topic, um, and, and you, you did it specifically with the wine industry, but it's something that's uh, applicable across the board. But first of all, I think we need a little explanation of what do you mean by evangelists when it comes to uh, what your research is all about. Sure. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for, for having us. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, we are, we're excited about this uh, uh, topic. And uh, the um, reason, uh, so evangelists are basically people, uh, audience members, you know, whether it, like, for example, in the context of the wine industry, um, could be critics, uh, uh, mm -hmm. restaurateurs, uh, retailers, um, bloggers, uh, anybody else, any kind of important audience members who uh, don't just leave it to just you know make a purchase or uh, have a transaction, but uh, just have to go out there and advocate passionately on behalf of, in this case, you know, wine industry. Right. And um, but of course, yes, uh, we, we we do see this across a variety of industries. But yeah, it, it's, it so it's people who who sort of really get in love with the product and will go out there and tell the world about right. it. And it's particularly evident in Ontario winemaking, uh, where we mean like it's, it's kind of a counterintuitive thing, right? Wine mm -hmm. in, in Ontario and Canada is, uh, being originally from the States, it's not something you think about. And right. here they just have this incredibly uh, mobilized and passionate uh, force of retailers, uh, practitioners that are all going out there and, and, and celebrating. Uh, the achievements of this industry. So, well, what are the kinds of things that they do? Well, they they uh, uh, so uh, they organize uh, various uh, uh, events uh, to you know to taste wines to yeah. sometimes um, uh, sometimes just uh, various ways to get people who are still skeptical about Ontario wine to to taste it. So, for example, restaurant tours will sometimes. Uh, uh, approach a customer who specifically asks for a California wine and they'll mm -hmm. say, well, here, try this and try this side by side, you know, we'll, I won't tell you what, right. where, where this wine is from and, and they'll taste and they'll, they'll appreciate it and say, well, guess what, it's from Ontario mm -hmm. or you, you had education, writing, blogging, right. you know, just and, talking. And vol to voluntarily, lot, lot, sometimes, you know, there's no, there's no monetary incentive, it's just, mm -hmm. it's largely based upon a belief. If you're a restaurant and you're going to go out and sell a new wine and you're going to commit to a VQA only list. I mean that that says something about your your mm -hmm. belief and and uh, in in an industry that isn't even your own. It's right. it's it's an, a practice that you have come to identify with so, uh, so at a high level. Is there is there kind of two sides to this? Is there like the conscious effort on the part of say the wine industry or the wineries themselves, and then there's the people who have become the evangelists just taking it on themselves. Is is there two sides to it? Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it, it's, I mean, like, you know, the question of whether it's, it's strategic or not, I think, is there. I mean, I think people, it's a passionate product. People love right. uh, the product. But, you know, I do think, and at least from our, from our own research, is that there's a strategic intent to bring people in to uh, love what you're doing. It's not just simply loving the product. It's, it's loving the, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the practice of, of, of creating wine in a very interesting, unique place and history, and then having those individuals relate to it, and going off and being advocates. Um, it's in, in a very authentic, real way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and when when people um, get get behind the product, like what what are some of the things that you've been you've been seeing? Like, how did you research this? How did you find yeah. this out? Yeah. yeah. Well, this is this is one of those uh, um, things that were sort of a discovery driven by. Kind of the data. So mm -hmm. we we had been studying uh, the wine industry for some years, and uh, uh, we've seen pretty rapid kind of evolution in terms of just how much support uh, the industry started receiving over a pretty short period of time. Um, and uh, so, and uh, we kind of started trying to explain, you know, what what could be some of the factors, and that, that's one of the factors that sort of seemed to emerge is that uh, that. Um, uh, we oftentimes, um, you know, in, in uh, business schools and in the business world, we talk about kind of trying to make uh, our products and our practices understood by key audiences. But um, that that didn't quite seem to fit because it seemed like it wasn't just the, these audience members were simply understanding what uh, what these wineries right. were doing. They were gung ho about it. Became it, it, it turned into some sort of a social movement, really, where these people were. Um, 
uh, energized and passionate and they just kept on uh, you know using every uh, mean at their disposal to try to uh, right. advocate and promote uh, Ontario wine. Yeah. Yeah. And you, can, you can just see it. It's out there in the wine societies and the activities of wine mm -hmm. societies and the activities of bloggers. Um, and you know, it's, what's interesting about it is that these are, you know, these are individuals who have, you know, quite frankly, you know, powerful impact in the way that people perceive and, and view things. And uh, in, in these cases, it was largely volunteered based upon their relationships uh, and based upon their belief in, in, in the practice of Ontario uh, fine wine. And it's had, uh, you know, being from our own sort of study, is, is you can just see the, uh, the spread of evangelism over time with the spread of consumption of Ontario, uh, of Ontario wine. Um, it's, they seem to be going hand in hand. As, as Ontario wine exploded, so did Ontario wine societies across uh, the right. province. Um, that, you know, there was these connoisseurs, critics, wine writers, uh, that had gotten behind it mm -hmm. and uh, to really gradually uh, spread the practice. Right. Now that said, I think that, uh, I think the wine industry, the uh, Ontario wine industry would say that there's still a way to go. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course, because there's still places that don't know about Ontario wine or yeah. still restaurants that won't, don't serve Ontario yeah. wine. So is there, what, what can this mean for the, for the like what's, what's the biggest sort of takeaway for uh, the wine industry from this? Well, for, for, for the wine industry is, is that I, I, um, I think there, there's a, some wineries that uh, are doing a very good job in terms of really trying to cultivate evangelists and, uh, um, and uh, others are not quite there yet. Uh, in terms of um, figuring out their strategy, really, for uh, for creating evangelists. And uh, um, so it does seem to be uh, a, a, an important strategic priority for, uh, for, for individual wineries and also mm -hmm. perhaps for, um, um, you know, for some of the trade groups, like the Wine Council, Ontario, you know, how, how to develop this sort of the evangelism mm -hmm. strategy. Mm -hmm. And I, I would imagine... It, uh, one of the key things is you have to have a good product. I mean, you can't Absolutely. you can't uh, you can't develop evangelists if what if you're not putting out the best possible product. It's it's so it's a it's a strategy, but you have to have Absolutely. something to back it Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, I, and I and I also sort of you know specifically with wine and you know, sort of the the notion of what is good wine. I think there's probably some leeway in that for so an individual such as myself. You know, at the end of this, uh, at the end of the research, you know you. You kind of become, you know, for my own self, as the, my family came to visit, I'd like to take them to Ontario wineries. Right. I'm not really that big of a <laughs> wine drinker myself. Right. But, so that's an yeah. example of, of, yeah. of, of, of the yeah. sort of the power of this notion of, of, of me taking people, telling them, you know, the neat stories of the various wineries that mm -hmm. are out there uh, as a, really a, a not, a, not a wine expert at all. I not, would not say that I have right. an inkling of, of, of what constitutes great wine. Right. So are, are there things that the wineries can do? I mean, I think you've talked a little bit about it, but yeah. are there, there things that they can do that can create evangelists? Sure. Evan yeah. Evangelists, yes. yeah. Yeah, well, we, we identified uh, um, uh, sort of rituals uh, mm -hmm. that, that wineries engage in um, to sort of to create this kind of authentic uh, uh, emotional connections with, uh, with audience members. So mm -hmm. provenance uh, rituals that kind of talk about the, kind of, uh, the process uh, by which wine is uh, made, mm -hmm. uh, kind of the history of the, or, or the history of the winery um, and tradition and so mm -hmm. on. Um, hed hed uh, hedonic rituals, basically kind of that sort of uh, help people be part of this enjoyment and pleasure. Right. And the uh, glory rituals that sort of emphasize the kind of the acclaim, the word, the scarcity, the sort of the, the, the kind of the uniqueness and the specialness of, of the particular wine or of the process that uh, that's being uh, used and uh, or of the winery itself so those are some of the examples and uh, um, uh, there are a variety of uh, ways that that these rituals sort of play out which obviously we can't right. uh, get into but yeah. uh, but th those seem to be our sort of key uh, uh, findings in right. terms of how they actually do this and, and you know I think the one of the, uh, the one of the misconceptions I think people have with the paper is that this is a consumer uh, marketing effort, mm -hmm. and I, there's there's no denying that marketing language and people do view it as sort of a, a, uh, as a potential sort of form of marketing, like mm -hmm. wine tasting, wine tours. Uh, but the, what we sort of see is that people are authentically touched with this and have right. an actual connection with your winery. Mm -hmm. uh, they become part of your community, right. and rituals play a key role in in fostering that 
uh, that authenticity and that uh, that relationship. Right. Yeah, you have to be authentic. Yes. That's right. Yeah. 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 Well, it's a fascinating topic. So glad you were able to come by and tell us a little bit about it. Thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you, Susan. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. And thank you for uh, joining us and tuning in, and hopefully we'll talk soon.